It's your golfing buddy Bobby Lopez right here. And we're going to talk today about the plane. Nice little drill here to get you started. You go on down to the hardware store and get some of these snow poles, they're called. Hmm. I'd have put one down there on my toes, but I've never been accused of being smart. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Should have put one there. But anyway, it gives you an idea of where you lined up. You want to do that. And you take another stick and you put it right on the golf club and just grip it. You can tape it on there if it makes it easier for you. I'm too lazy. I just put it on there and grab it. And then I'm going to draw a line right up the shaft here. And then I'm going to draw another line just above it. And you notice how when I take the club back. Come on. Oops. There you go. See, at my point of view, it's going to look like it's pointed right at that stick. Then I'm going to hinge it. What happened to my line I had there? Used to have an old show. What's my line? You go up there and say what you did there. Now the club head's going to follow that top line. And the stick will be pointed at this stick on the ground. So that gives you at least a point of reference to know whether you're doing this thing right or not. Then, if I drop my arms, because on the way back, I turned my chest with the club. See that? They're turning at the same rate of speed. On the, on the way down, they're not going to. I'm going to drop my arms first, see? And my body will be a little slower. And what will happen as a result, the club will come down on that bottom line, not on the top line. I'm right back where I started, which is what we want. Now, I'm pointing at about 10 o'clock, and it look like it's pointed right at that stick. It's not following the stick because the club does go on an arc. So even though it may not look like it here, the club is traveling on an arc like this, but it will look like it's pointed at the stick. And then I hinge and boom, pointed at it again. Now, let's look over here at McElroy. I still think if anybody knows him that watches this video, tell him say he should come up with a bar, a power bar, you know, eat a McElroy on the ninth green. If you'll be set for the back nine or something. It's a great name for a bar, McElroy. See this? Huh? He's going to follow that line on up. Then he's going to come on down on the bottom line. Gabish. The ball can only pay attention to the club face and the path, the club face and the path. The only thing the ball wants to know is where did the club come from and where was it when it got there? And if you can hurl this puppy, just like you were hurling a discus, on a plane like this, the only other problem you got is your club face. That's why I'm going to show you the greatest ball striker of all time. This guy hits it perfect every freaking time. Every time. See? Why? Because his spine is set. So this arm can't do anything but travel on the same path every time. Now, let's look at some other players. Uh, here's Jay. Jay Woodson. You might not know who he is, but he's won the state championship here three times in a row. Played a lot of golf. Awfully good. Just a, a breath away from being in the big time. And watch this. I'm going to put another line up here. Let's see what he does. There he goes up that top line. Then he comes down the bottom line. Well, pretty much. It's close. He's close. Let's look at, uh, let me see. I had some other ones I wanted to show you here. Where was the other one? Hello. Oh, Sergio. Here's Sergio. Here's Sergio. I'm glad I'm not a bullfighter, Garcia. We'll put this right here. Here. Up. Come down on the bottom one. Kabish. How do you come down on the bottom one? Do what he said. My dad told me to pull down on a chain with both hands. So if he pulls down with his arms at a faster rate of speed than the turn of his chest, the club will come down on a path inside of the path he went back on. Hmm. Does that make any sense? I thought there was another one I wanted to show you, too. There's a, it was an Australian kid or something here. But I think you got the idea. You know, all you got to do is go down and get yourself... Some of these sticks are about a dollar eighty a piece if you go to Home Depot or um, Lowe's or something like that. We call them snow poles here. They're really for marking your driveway. But this is how the whole mania started. See, so I'm pointing at that stick, 
Right now, I hinge. I caution you on not turning too much because then you get the club back behind you. Look where my right elbow is. Then I drop the arms, drop the arms, drop the arms. There you go. Ba boom, ba boom, ba 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 boom, ba boom. Pow. There it goes. I went back to right where we started. There you go. And up she goes. All right. Hope this drill helps you. Get your swing on path. Get your grip right. Get your path right. You, you can't lose. Bobby Lopez here from Quick Fix Golf on behalf of myself and Jim Basin. We're hoping you're going to come out and see us and have us take a look at your swing. Now let me tell you why you, you need to come see us rather than somebody else. Because I'm not the only Cuban with a camera. I'm certainly not the only one with a boat. <laughs> and uh, there's other places that take golf lessons. But let me tell you why we're going to help you. We don't teach you one plane, two plane you know, stack and wilt and being connected and uh, all this other stuff. We take a look at what you do and we try to determine, is there something in your swing that's hanging you up? And if so, what are we going to do about it? How do we realign that so that it starts working to your benefit? Everybody's got a different swing, as you're going to see right here. Here's Grant Wade on the left. And watch how he takes this club straight back on that line. And look how he's parallel to the plane at the top. I mean, picture perfect. Textbook. That you probably never heard of. So here we go. Right? Club face angles perfectly in line. Then we look at this kid, Lee Porter, over here on the right. And he's a pretty good player. I think he plays some nationwide and some other stuff. I didn't want to pick on any of our students without letting them know, making them feel bad. We could have found some funny swings to put up here. But look at this. See? Nothing's in alignment. He's a little steep on the way back. His arms are a little steep. And watch what he's going to do. Uh, Ba-boom. Look at that. Perfectly in line with the plane as he comes into the ball, which is the only time the ball is really going to care. Watch this. Now you got the same thing here. He's perfectly in line with the plane. One sort of looks prettier than the other, a little more traditional. But who cares? The ball is not going to complain. I mean, you look at this character right here, you think this kid's a little steep. Now watch this guy. Here's Jim Furyk, of course. Look at this. Straight up in the air. Fourth floor. Here we go. Up it goes. And then, whoa! He loops it on around, and he still gets it on the plane back where he originally had his shaft angle at address. Look at this. See, it's a good thing he's skinny. Otherwise, he'd never be able to pull that one off. I guarantee it. See, so what we're going to do is look at your swing, and we're going to be able to slow it down with this video here. And you're going to see that if your head moves, what's the big deal? Watch this. I see more people ruining their swings because they're trying to keep their head down. See, his head moves. Oh, you'll say, yeah, but he's the only one. It's okay, here, here's another one. Watch this. Look at that. <laughs> now... Let's look at my old buddy Bernhard Langer here. Now watch this. You're going to say, well, wait a minute. Uh, he doesn't move his head. Well, watch what happens. He comes here. Up he goes. Head's relatively still. Now watch what happens. Bang. He goes back the other way. See? So there's all kinds of different ways to, to pull this off. And, and, I mean, I've seen guys that they have a hard time moving their head on the backswing, so then they move it on the downswing. I've seen guys that move it on the downswing, they don't move it on the backswing. You know, we're going to look at you and look at what you do and figure out what's going to best work for you. Look at this kid. He chokes up on the club like that. And they probably told you everywhere, you got to have a longer club or you won't hit it as far. And this kid knocks the snot out of it. And he's only about, what, 5'5"? Five, five? So everybody's different. We're going to treat you individually. And we're going to get you playing the kind of golf you want to play a whole lot sooner than trying to force fit you into somebody's swing method or try to teach you how I swing. I mean, you don't want to swing like I swing. You look at this guy right here. Look at this. Look at those little heads. Can you imagine we used to play golf with these things? Look at this. Look how little that is. But watch. Now, he's got what they call a pretty flat swing, right? But it worked for him. So let's find a swing that works for you. We're at Quick Fix Golf. That's where you can find us on the internet, or you can call the pro shop over there, ask for Jim Mason, or ask for, for myself, Bobby Lopez, at 
448-4727. Let's get you started. Let's just do one. And let's just see what your swing looks like and see if there's a way we can help you. We always offer a money-back guarantee so you can't lose.